Hi, welcome to Paleo Greenbird. I'm Greenbird, and today's video is going to be a survival video. And we're going to talk a little bit about rivers and roads and how they can help you find yourself out of a survival situation. Now, depending on where you're located, there, there will be um, different variations as to how you utilize this information. But I'm going to make this as general as possible. And hopefully it will help anybody who ever finds themselves in a situation, whether you be off the beaten trail, you get turned around hunting, you're you know, uh, berry picking and you get lost, whatever it is. So the, the general rule of thumb is, is small rivers lead to big rivers, big rivers lead to small roads, small roads lead to big roads, and big roads lead to people. Now you can simplify that down to rivers lead to roads, roads lead to people. That generally is, is enough um, for the most part. If you find a river, you, if you follow it long enough, you'll typically find a road. But let, let's say you're maybe more remote and you find small rivers. Uh, as you probably know, most rivers, they tend to gravitate towards larger rivers. I'm on the East Coast, so the rivers here tend to go to larger rivers, which end up in the ocean. But wherever you're at, g get in tune with where what your, uh, the, the to topography of your uh, geography is and where your rivers tend to flow, and that will help you. So, you find yourself in a situation where you're lost, you find a small river, we'll just go through the whole formula. That small river, 9 out of 10 times, if you follow it downstream, yes, sometimes maybe you get a spring that dead ends, but most of the time, you're going to get that river that flows into a larger river. That larger river, if you follow that river, and I'll back up and talk about how to follow that river, that will typically lead to either a road or some sort of population, just because the way our country was settled, uh, typically, the, the the cities were were populated along the rivers for trade, for um, you know, uh, for energy, you know, the, the mills, the the water mills and stuff like that, and unfortunately for popul for uh, pollution as well, they would dump their pollution. But anyway, typically, if you follow those rivers, you're you're going to find a road, a small road, a big road, whatever it is. Um, now let's back up to the river real quick. I would suggest following it downstream for me because I live on the East Coast, everything flows towards the ocean, which is where I'm more likely to find population. Again, you're going to want to tailor that to where you live. Uh, maybe your rivers do not follow that same type of pattern. But typically, if you follow that river, you're either going to follow, you're either going to find a population uh, or you're going to find industry, like some sort of company, maybe an old mill building, um, anything. But if you don't, you're going to find some sort of a road that eventually, that originally led to that river. Uh, maybe it still does, maybe it used to in the past, but if you follow that road back, chances are you're going to find a larger road because the larger roads are for major travel, the smaller roads are for access points. That larger road is almost always going to find, uh, is always, almost always going to lead to a populated area. Now there are exceptions, you may find yourself on a logging road that just dead ends and you you're nowhere and you have to reassess and recalculate you know what you think makes sense for you but as a rule something to remember that will help you in those situations is rivers lead to roads roads lead to people furthermore small rivers lead to big rivers big rivers lead to small roads small roads lead to big roads big roads almost always lead to people so I hope you found this informative. I'd love to hear your comments. If you have any suggestions, um, any experiences, please like, please share. And until next time, Paleo Greenbird signing out.